welcome back in the second video of the architecture of a proactive security tool series i will teach you how to send various messages between the injector as well as the sniffer thread in this example we send some data from the injector thread to the sniffer thread and basically display this data on both sides just to make sure that we have received the data correctly this example is basically to illustrate the messaging between the two threads let's go to the main function you will notice that this is exactly the code is exactly the same as in the previous example that is generic tool.c the framework code only difference being that now the sniffer as well as the injection threads have a lot of code in them so we go ahead and initialize the thread ids then we create the message queue then we start the two threads the sniffer thread as well as the injector thread and then pass them the message queue id as an argument then we basically wait for the sniffer as well as the injector thread to exit after they have exited we go ahead and destroy the message queue note that till the sniffer as well as the injector thread are running these two would basically block the ipc code is exactly the same as it was in the previous case let's just have a look at the structure message the data is just an integer and that is what we will send between both the threads let's look at the injector thread which is actually going to send the data we initialize a counter and we get the message queue id from the argument which was passed see the argument is a void star hence we cast it to an integer pointer first and then dereference it in order to find the message queue id then we define a message m after that we run a counter from 0 to 9 and for every iteration we fill up the m type to be 1 sim material all we need is a positive value for the other side to be able to read it and then in the data part we just put in whatever the value of counter is so the data would be running from 0 to 9 after that we call send message with the message queue id and the message and that would hopefully send the message here we actually print the value which we sent into the message queue and then go ahead and sleep for a second to cause some delay now moving on to the sniffer thread we initialize a counter of 0 here once again define a pointer to a message and then once again get the message queue by casting the void star arg to an integer pointer and then dereferencing it here in the while loop we receive message now as we can remember the receive message returns a malloced message type which actually means that it is our responsibility to free the message so if by any chances receive message causes an error then we'll print the error here else we just go ahead and print what data was received and that is available in m arrow data after that we go ahead and free m of course incrementing the counter by one more so what should actually happen here is that the injector thread would be running in a loop and sending these messages every second the message data would be the value of the counter at that point which would run from 0 to 9 the sniffer thread would also be running concurrently and would be receiving these messages from the message queue and then print the receive message note that by default message receive or the receive message api would block till a new message comes now let's try and run this program and see what the output is as we can see the injector sent a zero and the sniffer thread has received the same zero on the other side so sniffer again sends one 
uh, sorry the injector sends one and the sniffer received the one and so on and so forth till nine so this clearly illustrates that how two threads first of all are running concurrently and one of the threads which is injector in this case is writing to the message queue and the other is actually reading from the message queue now how do message queues actually look like and can we actually see the existence of a message queue this is quite easy to do let's open up a new terminal we use the command ipcs to show us the various ipc mechanisms which have been created so currently under message queues we do not find anything let's run this program and quickly shift here and run ipcs as you can see now a message queue has appeared so a message queue has appeared with an id of 32768 this is the message queue which we have created when we ran this program and because we are deleting the message queue as soon as we are done it also disappears from here once again let's run the program and run the IPCS command here and as you can see a message queue has appeared with permissions of 644 if you remember this was the permission set in the program code which we had put this is the permission which we put here and that is the permission which is given to the message queue we are running from a root login hence the owner is root this is the message queue ID which both the threads have With this we come to the end of this example. In the very next example, we will do something more meaningful with the architecture which we just created. In the next example, we will basically be interested in causing a denial of service for our requests on a network. What we will do is that we will have our sniffer sniff for our requests coming onto the network and then take those ARP request packet out and send them to the injector. The injector will now spoof an ARP reply with an invalid MAC address and send it out to the network to the host which requested the ARP in the first place. This will cause a race condition between the real host who has to reply to that ARP request and us. Whichever entry receives later overrides the previous entry and thus causes a denial of service. We'll talk about this tool in greater detail in the next example. Thank you.